200% hollow purple i was literally jumping up and down in my street uh, like seat not street maybe streets seat everything i was literally jumping up and down when i read the chapter this guy totally crazy totally crazy uh so we are back once again with a jujutsu kaisen video uh, last time we were talking about chapter 222 this time it's the uh, next chapter 223 and uh, honestly speaking gojo versus sukuna starting has to be the biggest take away from this chapter like i said too excited uh, you know i was one of those guys who was like you know like uh, a bit had doubts about you know how the fight will turn out to be you know because uh, it was actually a huge fight a lot of people had a lot of expectations on the fight and everything so there was some kind of a like you know i was thinking it was kind of a misdirect and all those things but it's like the hype is real like uh, whatever we saw in chapter 223 it literally justifies all the hype that has been surrounding these two characters and obviously yeah 200% uh, hollow purple that's all this video is about obviously not we'll be talking about a lot more things but uh, before we get to that uh, i want to give you a bit of you know background and other stuffs because uh, in cha when chapter 222 came out uh, a lot of people were like uh, criticizing akutami for like speed running the whole manga uh, but now that 223 is out a lot of questions and doubts and everything that people had in the previous chapter have been answered uh you know i was one of those guys like who was uh, actually thinking about the aftermath of shibuya because uh, when you look at the timeline shibuya happens and immediately like if shibuya is happening on october 31st uh that day midnight itself the culling game players were like kind of uh, awakened and uh, the culling game actually begins from november 1st and uh, everything happens within a period okay the current the current date in uh, chapter 223 is uh, december 24th so it's like within a span of like what one and a half months almost two months all of these things have happened like uh, the culling games and uh, kenchaku absorbing tengen and uh, gojo getting sealed unsealed all of those things so it has been like a mad ride like you know it had its up and downs obviously but uh, it was like very hectic like uh, we were just going from one battle to another battle one moment like uh, megumi is fighting another moment like uh, itadori is fighting and then suddenly we switch to yuta and all those guys and it's just fights 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 and then suddenly sukuna takes over megumi and then again we are like you know preparing for another big battle so obviously people felt that you know the manga was you know going at a breakneck speed and everything uh but come like in chapter 223 like i said i was one of those people who was expecting to know more about the aftermath of shibuya incident like i was curious to know okay like shibuya was uh, something that happened on a large scale like you know a fucking meteor summoned from the sky and everything so obviously like i wanted to know answers like how it affected people like what happened to it and everything and kind of 223 uh kind of like you know gives some answers because the chapter itself starts at shibuya you can see that meteor over there in the panel the very first panel of the chapter that's the one that jogo summoned and uh, gojo himself is trying to you know bring back like okay he has not been there for a long time and stuffs and uh, he kind of asks about the people too like what happened to the people if you remember like uh, gojo had opened a domain expansion like for 0.2 seconds while he was fighting against uh, jogo hanami and all those guys so he asks uh, ejichi about what happened there and like obviously like uh, those people are slowly getting back to their life they are integrated into the society and uh, this is kind of you know in line with what the narrator had said before like uh, in chapter like uh, 89 uh, when this was happening when the whole incident was happening when gojo opened his domain expansion and everything the narrator had mentioned over there that okay uh, the people who are affected by gojo's infinite void will be you know uh like rehabilitate and they'll be able to join back society and go back to the normal lives within 2 months so that was october 31st uh now we are at december 24 so like within a span of 2 months time i guess all of those people are uh, you know back to the normal lives and everything but the important point here like a small piece of detail that caught my attention was uh like the, the people i guess from what uh, igg said the people were kind of stuck in the basement itself till the time they were treated and everything because he was like since gojo's residual cursed energy was there 
in that uh, basement the curse spirits and all that which were which were released in shibuya right they did not you know dare to attack that place and everything they kind of stayed away from that place so it is possible that the people who are being treated and everything were like you know staying in that area itself uh i guess i'm ranting a lot about like the shibuya part and everything because that's something that i wanted answers to and i get answers and i'm like very happy about it okay yeah that point is addressed at least and uh, one more thing like if you remember in the last chapter uh, when gojo was about to go to fight like when he was preparing for the fight with those eyes and everything and all that uh, coming with all that swagger and everything gaku ganji and utahime were with him and once again a lot of people had questions about why why is gaku ganji there of all people you know like he is someone who killed yaga so wha- what kind of interactions went between the old geezer and uh, gojo and all those kind of things and once again go uh, akutami has kind of like you know answered our questions uh, because we get a flashback if you've seen our previous video like uh, the uh, kind of review analysis kind of thing we did on chapter 222 we were discussing over there that we were of the opinion that okay yeah a lot of flashbacks are going to come because uh, akutami had left hints at every point in chapter 222 and we already see that happening because in this chapter uh, the interaction between gojo and gakuganji that happened behind the doors or whatever like we come to know about it and gakuganji just like straight up goes to gojo and tells him that okay yeah i was the one who killed yaga and uh, even more surprisingly gojo had like the same kind of reaction like a similar reaction to like you know uh, like the way he reacted to nanami's death and way he reacted to yaga's death they are both kind of like similar he is like cool so uh, you know there is some kind of you know uh, i don't think uh, gaku ganji is someone who actually enjoyed or you know killing yaga or something because uh, when panda comes in that chapter to find yaga death he asks him like why aren't you cursing me okay and you see that same question being asked to gojo over here again like when gojo replies with just a simple cool uh, yaga is uh, like gak sorry gaku ganji is like okay why are you guys not even cursing me like i did something wrong and you guys are not even reacting to it in any kind of way so gojo is someone like you know his answer over there is basically something like okay it's because i got sealed that the higher ups decided to give you an order to kill yaga and everything but uh, you can draw some sort of conclusions from those answers like from that answer which he gives you know uh, that at that point it felt as if gojo had decided to take all the responsibility of you know you know cleaning up the mess uh, whatever happened in Shib- whatever happened at shibuya after he got sealed the culling games you are taking over of megumi and everything i guess in a way gojo blames himself for being sealed and everything uh, as the reason for why all of this happened so i feel that uh, that is the mindset of a person who is like uh, taking lot of things onto himself like he is holding himself responsible and he's trying to bear the weight all on his own and that is i guess visible in his actions too the where he is like not caring much about other things oops you know the way he is not caring much about other things and just going to directly fight with sukuna and everything so that's kind of understandable like what he is kind of drawing over there so yeah that kind of gives us a bit of you know a uh, sneak peek into the mindset of gojo and gaku ganji obviously uh, but another important point over there is that uh, even though yaga told gaku ganji the secret of uh, like how to create a puppet like panda he did not mention it to the higher ups even though it was a matter of special grade so that says a lot about how much gaku ganji has changed and i guess even gojo understood that and that is the reason why you know he let the old man accompany him like you know let him be with him for the upcoming fight and all those kind of things uh so i guess i've been talking a lot about Ga- about gaku ganji and gojo's interaction and everything but i'm actually curious to know like what you guys think about that you know bit of a flashback like Uh, do you think it was weird that gojo actually decided to forgive him with that small conversation itself or uh, do you think his thought process was right like you know taking everything on to himself and you know try, uh, understanding that okay maybe gaku ganji is a changed person now so i guess even panda was like uh, listening to what was going on between those guys cute little panda standing outside the doors so yeah that bit of information was also in there so after this flashback i i guess we get into the main fight 
uh, you know and and now the biggest part or the biggest revelation that came to us is obviously utahime's curse technique i guess uh, ever since utahime was seen like uh, i guess the first time we saw her saw her was uh, before the kyoto sister school event uh, when she came ca- comes with the uh, kyoto students and everyone to like you know meet and everything so ever since that point i guess a lot of people have been you know debating theorizing assuming like you know what utahime's curse technique would be i guess in the fan book uh, akutami had mentioned that it is something related to singing and i guess a lot of chapters later and a lot of wait like after waiting for a very long time i guess we finally get our answer it is called the solo solo forbidden zone solo solo forbidden zone uh, something along those lines so uh, it's like it's something like a buff that you get in video games okay like uh, she can amplify the cursed energy output of herself and also like you know certain targets or certain people she wishes to who are within the range of her curse technique so that is kind of revealed in this chapter and it came as a surprise that's like that seems like a pretty op kind of a curse technique to me so uh, that aside uh, we see that uh, utahime and gakugan ji are actually helping gojo out with you know something over there so obviously utahime is trying to you know improve uh, gojo's cursed energy output and uh, gakugan ji i guess is mostly only there as a part of the ritual and uh, there was a gigi obviously and uh, like yeah last chapter also we were like uh, in the discussion we were having for the last chapter uh, me and devang were kind of like speculating as to what task you know gojo could have given ichiji it was something like gojo was like we i have an important task for you so you need to stay sharp and everything and uh, we were like obviously wondering okay what kind of task could ichiji carry out and it uh, turns out that gojo actually wanted to make him some kind of a barrier and everything and the reason why he trusted ichichi to do it because even like that the guy himself asks like you know okay why me like there could be a lot of people out there who are like you know maybe more uh, better at building barriers and other stuffs than me so why exactly are you trusting me with this so uh, gojo's answer and i think it has been a long time coming for uh, someone like ichichi you know gojo is like because you are the person i trust the most and i think that guy needed it i think ichichi needed to hear that at least once because he has been working as ass off like the whole series you see him being like overworked and you know being like con- li- literally being ridiculed the whole time by gojo and others so I, you know it's some kind of a, it's like a small redemption for him like you know being told that and you see that you see his motivation and everything in the very next scene when he's trying to build the barriers he gives his 100% to do what he has been tasked to do and that kind of helps gojo in the fight okay so coming back to uh, utahime and what those guys were doing out there so you see her uh, doing a dance kind of a, a thingy with hand signs and everything so basically uh, the narrator mentions a very crucial piece of information for us you know a uh, jujutsu sorcerer's strength or you know you become more of a pro jujutsu sorcerer when you kind of like remove all the hand signs and incantations and everything that are needed to perform your technique obviously because uh, when you think about it if you are fighting against uh, someone like you know a jogo or something in like a death match sort of thingy where your life is at risk you can't stand around and wait for your hand signs and all of those things you have to think fast and you should be able to use your curse technique within like one second or something because an opponent like jogo is like super fast and they are not going to give you time to recite incantations or perform your hand signs or anything like that and i guess this is kind of this is not the first time we are uh, hearing about hand signs and you know not using hand signs is kind of like a strength or something the similar concept has been mentioned in like hidden inventory arc you know just after you know riko has died and everything and gojo like activates his solo purple and all those stuffs uh we see that he trains for a year and after that there is a scene where he asks uh, you know yeri and uh, geto to throw stuff at him to show them that he has kind of mastered his you know infinity limitless and all those things over there it is mentioned that you know gojo actually stopped using hand signs and incantations and everything uh, basically hand signs that were needed to activate his technique and keep his technique running so that was seen as a pro point for sorcerers but over here what they do is even utahime performs all her hand signs incantations and even a dance making the whole thing as a ritual and even gojo does the same so i guess it is something like uh, you know 
and because of this because of all this both are able to in like you know improve their uh, efficiency the efficiency of their curse technique like uta himes was at 120 percent and gojo kind of used 200 percent hollow purple but i feel that was partly because of uta himes curse technique working you know helping him increase the output uh but there was also some you know some added bonus because of you know how he did not kind of like uh, miss out on any incantations or hand signs the reason like what actually is happening here is and the initial chapters of jujutsu kaisen if you remember uh, people used to reveal details about their curse technique so it was kind of like a binding valve like like by uh, divulging information about your curse technique you are actually making it more effective so something similar is happening here when you're actually you know going through every hand sign and every uh, incantation and every like step that is needed to perform your curse technique it's like an exchange for doing that you're getting like 120 percent efficiency or 200 percent efficiency which is kind of like portrayed over here by taking them out obviously in a battle it will be more effective but over here i guess gojo had more time because uh, the fight was only supposed to happen on December 24th. There was no, no date, no time, no fixed location, nothing. I mean, date was fixed. Sorry, I said no date. The date was fixed. It was December 24th. But there was no fixed time or place for that meeting to happen. Because when you look at the locations, uh, Sukuna was actually at Shinjuku. And uh, Gojo is at like Shibuya. I mean, they're not very far when you look at the map. But still, they're not at the same location. And... The barrier that Ichichi put up, right, that kind of helps, you know, Gojo mask his attack for a moment. And why? Once again, as the narrator kind of mentions over there, like uh, the first, the person, the first attack or the first most effective attack kind of decides who the challenger is in the scenario. Okay, so the scenarios and everything aside, because of all that, what uh, Utahime does and because of what Gojo does, it eventually gives us one of the most overpowered attacks I guess we have seen till now that is a 200% effective hollow purple and like I said Ijichi's barrier kind of like masks it and it catches Sukuna off guard like literally off guard but but here's the best part okay now uh, let me give you a, a minor detail about hollow purple because uh, it, it is possible that uh, people might miss out on this but uh, hollow purple is basically him combining his curse technique blue and red you know and uh, see one is kind of like attraction and one is kind of like repulsion kind of a force to put it very simply in a very simple way uh, uh, we, we have a detailed article written on you know gojo's limitless and all of those things so we'll kind of like link it over here so you know you can read it to get a more detailed understanding of it but for now uh, assume that uh, gojo's uh, like attraction and repulsion forces he combines them both and due to the negative and positive spaces combining there is kind of like an imaginary mass which is created and it travels at light speed so this is basically hollow purple now uh, the animation in the animation when you, if you saw jujutsu kaisen season one obviously then you might have seen gojo attacking uh, hanami with hollow purple but uh, from that if you're judging the speed of the attack from that then it's very wrong think of it like blink and it reaches from one point to the another you actually don't have much of a time to dodge it or you know come up with a defense or any sort of thing and that is precisely the reason why gojo used this attack over here and even so, even so, Sukuna sees, like Sukuna totally misinterprets the attack, obviously, because thanks again, thanks to Ijiji's barrier. I, I, I guess I've mentioned that a lot of times now, but I think you need to like, you know, know the specifics over here. Even without realizing what was coming at him, even though the attack was happening at like, you know, almost light speed or something, Sukuna just takes it head on. And what was the damage? Obviously, he got injured. Obviously, he got injured because of that attack, but the damage is like he just lost like or his hand gets burned off that's it uh, I, I see a lot of people discussing in uh, comments on multiple places that okay maybe sukuna actually dodged the attack because uh the he was standing on the building first and then you see him below and stuff like that i guess they're missing the point gojo's attack literally destroyed the whole building it just leveled the area and sukuna took it head on stopped it with his hand lost his hand comes out and he, he he doesn't look faced by it. it's not like he's scared or anything and he's like oh yes i stopped it and now he's just gonna get into the fight mode and gojo was able to you know uh like come out as a winner in this scenario mainly because sukuna did not see what was happening he did not sense it coming so just to assume that because gojo landed this hit he's on a he's having a upper hand in the whole fight 
would be kind of like stupid uh, i guess that's what i think because uh, sukuna is on a whole different level yeah he, like i mean if you look at the uh, author's notes or like what the narrator says in the chapter it's uh, basically something like the strongest sorcerer of the present and history's so- strongest sorcerer like they are both fighting each other and even though at the end like uh, gojo comes and cracks like a uh, amazing dialogue obviously after reading that dialogue I-, i think i just started respecting gojo even more like uh, the editor's comment of calling him a bad guy is just spot on like bad boy bad boy sorcerer literally bad boy sorcerer so after that attack it's not like he's staying back preparing for another attack or anything like that he just teleports in front of sukuna and he's like okay dude let me just get one thing clear okay you are the challenger here and that's like one of the most badass dialogues and you know jujutsu uh, the that jujutsu kaisen manga has seen i guess and obviously at that point the first time i was reading it at that point i was like fuck this is it this is this is hype this is the peak this is what i've been waiting for the whole time and but but when, once the chapter is over and when when you start thinking about it you feel like uh, is he kind of like is the dude kind of like being you know overconfident because you just hit him with you just hit your opponent with a uh 200 percent hollow purple and all that happened is like you know sukuna lost an arm lost an arm and uh, he doesn't seem very you know scared about that or anything he just comes out and he's frustrated at gojo obviously he when gojo is being so cocky you see sukuna being frustrated at gojo and you're like okay wait i i think this is not going to be an easy fight for either of them they, they they're going to both go at each other like and it's going to be some sort of a tie but uh, i once again like uh, i said that uh, gojo versus sukuna would be kind of like a misdirection you know uh, akutami is just riling us fans up you know he's just you know give feeding us what we need and suddenly there's going to be a there's going to be a moment in the fight it's what i feel okay i'm not predicting i'm just assuming that there's going to be a moment in the fight where things change for instance a lot of people have been wondering where kashimo is you know kashimo's sole reason for uh, making a contract with sukuna and uh, i mean making a contract with kenjaku and kind of being reborn as a culling game player is to fight sukuna he wanted to fight the strongest sorcerer alive and when all these characters had like met you know like initially uh, before like back in back in number 19 just before uh, gojo was unsealed and everything you saw kashimo with those guys but immediately after gojo was unsealed and on december 24th and all those things you don't see kashimo anywhere over there so obviously one starts questioning okay like what is that guy up to like is he is he like uh, somewhere away on his own is he is he planning something is he trying to interfere in the fight and a lot of people have theorized that it is possible that dude is just going to jump in and you know uh, then there's going to be a three way fight between the three of them that is possible or like you know something's going to happen it's not going to be your uh, straightforward 1v1 is what i feel because uh, narratively speaking if you look at uh, how the story is sukuna itadori should be rising up to this moment like itadori should be the one who should be fighting sukuna at his peak and uh, if gojo versus sukuna is happening at this point of time uh, unless you take gojo off the board like maybe sukuna kills him or something like that itadori is not getting a chance to fight sukuna so i don't know some expectations need to be managed i guess and uh, we'll see what Akutami hasn't planned for us because the way it started it totally like you know broke my expectations it it, it went way beyond my expectation this is not what i was expecting and this that was just awesome so i guess in the future to akutami will have something up his sleeve you know where he's like cooking basically like a lot of people say so yeah that's that uh but still but still and uh, again i'd like to know you guys as opinion on what you think about the fight like you know how the whole thing started and what do you think about it do you think gojo is going to win sukuna is going to win what's your opinion on that and I, i i know it is very controversial kind of like to pick one you know because not controversial it will be like very hard tough sell to like choose one of these characters but i guess let's see you'll have to eventually bet on one of those guys i guess a lot of people are betting on sukuna actually uh most are just assuming that gojo is going to die <laughs> but yeah let's see let's see what's going to happen in the next chapters uh so i guess that is the most i plan to discuss in this video i have some uh, i guess we'll be rolling out another video discussing about other you know minor minor points from this chapter very soon so till then stay tuned and uh, if you feel that uh, i have missed out any points about sukuna and uh, gojo's fight or anything related to the curse technique and other stuff so you can just hit me up in the comments below and uh, we can have a discussion on that soon okay so that's all folks bye bye see you until the next video
yeah oh yeah don't forget to like subscribe and comment and share or yeah all those things <laughs> straightforward stuffs okay bye